Welcome to our lecture line. Now we're going to take a look at the Atwood machine and use it to figure out the tension in the strings. We're going to do three cases of this. In the first case, in this video, we're going to assume that the pulley has no mass and no friction. On the next video, we're going to assume the pulley has friction. And on the third video, we're going to assume that the pulley has mass because we'll, figure, we'll have to do it differently in each case. But if the pulley has no mass and no friction, just like in the previous video, we can assume that T1 must equal T2. T1 equals T2. And we can assume that M1 being the heavier of the two objects, because it's much bigger, will cause the whole system to accelerate in this direction. So on the left side, the acceleration will be downward. And on the right side, the acceleration will be upward. The acceleration will be the same for both objects, M1, M2, except the direction will be different, but the magnitude at least will be the same. To find the tension here, let's go to mass 2. Realizing that mass 2 is accelerating upward, we can find out what the tension is on that side. We can say that T2 is equal to the weight of this object, which is M2g, plus the force required to accelerate it upward, which would be M2a. For this object right here, M1 being the heavy object, it's going to accelerate downward. We can then say that T1 is equal to the weight of that object, which is M1g, minus the force required to accelerate it downward, which is M1a. In each case, the a is the same for both. And realizing, of course, that T1 equals T2, we can then say that M2g plus M2a equals M1g minus M1a. And if we calculate those independently, you'll find out those are equal to each other. Now, how do we find the solution for T1 and T2? Just like before, we need to know the acceleration. To find the acceleration, we can then assume this to be one complete system. We can draw a free body diagram around the whole system. And then we can look at all the forces acting on the system, not the internal forces, but the external forces acting on the system. There's only two in this case. The first force is the weight caused by the weight on M1, which is M1g, and the weight on M2, which is M2g. Those are the only two forces. Notice that M1g being larger than M2g will cause the whole system to accelerate in this direction. Assuming that to be the correct direction, we can now come up with the equation that tells us that F net equals mass total times acceleration. And the net force is going to be M1g, the larger of the two forces, minus Mg, M2g, the smaller of the two forces, which is equal to the total mass, M1 plus M2, times acceleration of the system. Notice that the direction of A is in the same direction as the direction of the force on M1. We can now solve for A by saying that A is equal to M1g minus M2g, divided by the coefficient m1 plus m2. Knowing the masses of those two objects, and of course knowing that g is 9.8 meters per second square, that allows us to find a, and then a will then get inserted into these two equations to find, oh, these two equations to find tension one and tension two. And ultimately, of course, then you can compare them to each other and realize they are the same. Just wanted to show you the technique here that Tension 2 is equal to the weight of the object plus the force required to accelerate it upward. Tension 1 can be found by taking the weight of the object minus the force required to accelerate it downward. And those two tensions will then be equal to one another. And that's how it's done.